Greetings to all of our friends and partners across America and around the world. Our topic today is, Why Did God Choose Israel? The Bible says in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, the Word of God says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. And I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And through you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. End of quote. This scripture contains some of the most important verses of truth in the Bible. First, the ownership of the land of Israel is fabricated controversy that dominates the headlines of newspapers and the breaking news stories of television networks. Why did God choose Israel? Let's look briefly at Bible history. After creating heaven and earth in Genesis chapter 1, God sought a man who would obey his commandments and be loyal to his authority. God created Adam, and Adam and Eve promptly had a counseling session with a snake in the Garden of Eden. That snake seduced them into disobeying the command of God not to eat the forbidden fruit of the tree of life. Angels with flaming swords drove Adam and Eve out of the garden. God tried again with Noah's generation. And they failed God so miserably, the Bible says, that God regretted that he had even made man. God's third effort to establish a righteous generation on earth was with Abram, who became known as Abraham. God gave him a series of commands which Abraham followed exactly. Those commands are found in Genesis 12. Quote, Go forth from your country. Why? because it was an idolatrous country and his relatives were living in idolatry. And go from your relatives and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. End of quote. Abraham obeyed God completely, even to the point of willing to sacrifice his son Isaac on the altar on the top of Mount Moriah in Jerusalem. God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, gave him and his descendants, Isaac and Jacob and the Jewish people of the world, the land of Israel whose borders are recorded in Scripture many times. The land that God gave Abraham and the Jewish people is far greater than the state of Israel today. It takes all of the land from the Mediterranean Sea to a western border to the Euphrates River on the eastern border. The land grant God has given to Israel, as recorded in Scripture, is 30 times larger than the state of Israel today. 30 times larger. If Israel today were currently occupying all the land that God gave them, it would control all of present-day Israel, all of Lebanon, the West Bank of Jordan, plus substantial portions of Syria, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia. After giving the land to Abraham and the Jewish people forever by a blood covenant, God made a personal covenant with Abraham. I will bless those who bless you, and I will make your name great. Genesis 12, 2. Then God made a national covenant with Abraham, saying, Quote, I will make you a great nation. Israel's survival over millennials of time is one of the greatest miracles of history. It has withstood constant Arab assaults. It has withstood wars, boycotts, terrorist attacks, and the slaughter of the Holocaust to become one of the most prosperous and powerful nations on the face of the earth. Only God could do that. Some biblical scholars spiritualized the meaning of the term the land and the state, saying that the land is in fact heaven. Wrong. There is no river Euphrates in heaven. It's on earth, according to Genesis 15, 18. God gave exact boundaries to the specific piece of land on planet earth. 
If God had meant heaven, why would Abraham need to take a long walk to see it? God meant a literal land. I encourage Christians everywhere to always and in all occasions, both personal and publicly, to aggressively in word and deed support the Jewish right to the land of Israel, all of it. God bless you for standing with Israel. If you were blessed by this devotional, would you prayerfully consider a donation to Hagee Ministries to help us to continue to take this life-giving message of Jesus Christ to all the world and to every generation? You can give today by going to www.jhm.org. That's God's Word for this week. I'll see you Sunday morning live over the Internet at 8.30 or 11 a.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook, YouTube, or our website at Hagee Ministries. I'll see you Sunday morning.